Did you know that it is actually very easy to run up your AWS or Vercel server bill with just plain bad design for your backend? I'm going to show you within a way oversimplified example within Next.js where we can kind of talk about some of the design issues that you can run into and how to fix them. Again, there are going to be comments, I don't care. This is oversimplified. Obviously, real backends are much more complex. I've built them, I'm currently building them. They are definitely more complex. But this is kind of an oversimplified version to show you some of the things that can go wrong and some of the things that you could probably think about in designing your backends. So we've got a basic T3 app here and we have got two different API endpoints. I've got a protected one and an unprotected one. And you're going to kind of see what's going on here. So let's go ahead over here and exit out these windows I don't need. Let's go over to API slash unprotect. So as we can see, it hangs. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And if you look over here at the code, you can kind of see why we're waiting. We've got two simulated um, functions here that we are using to kind of simulate a database request and something that you're doing with the data. So this could take you know any amount of time. It's an indeterminate amount of time, but we've kind of hard coded it in as four seconds for the database request, which is a really long database request, and three seconds for the data request. So on every single function call you make, okay, it's going to take seven seconds to process that. That's not good, right? And where this matters is when you start using serverless things like Vercel, and now every single request that somebody makes to that endpoint, you're running up seven seconds of compute time. That can start to add up, especially if somebody finds out about this, and they decide to maliciously start spamming that API endpoint with requests, right? Now you've got thousands or hundreds of thousands of requests that are running up your compute bill on Vercel. This is obviously also inefficient. You could probably design it in such a way that, you know, it doesn't take four seconds for a database request. But the key fact of the matter here is that this API endpoint is unprotected. It doesn't even really necessarily matter at this point about the security implications here because right down here, we're just tossing out all of the data. We're not giving them any information here. So I'm not necessarily talking about the security concerns. That's obviously not great here. When I say unprotected, I mean there is nothing here that will keep any user anywhere in the world from making a request to this API endpoint and running up your bill, or at least just running up your compute time. Okay, that's obviously not good. Now, let's hop over here into the protected endpoint. And if we make the same request, you can go ahead and look at the code while I'm making this, but if you make the same request over to the, if I can type correctly, over to the protected endpoint, you see we immediately get a response. There was almost no lag time here. We can refresh a thousand times and we are getting this very quickly. If we look down at our network tab, we could probably find how long it took. Um, it was a very short period of time. Let's see. So it, it took the ma it, you know a matter of milliseconds because we're only transferring 269 bytes here. Um, so it took almost no time at all. There's probably somewhere that I can find the actual response time, but it was very very fast. And if we can if we look over here at the code, we see why. We've also got a, a function here in the protected endpoint where we are checking to see if the user is authenticated. We're using a very simple hard-coded API key here, but you can picture using this with like next auth and get server session and things like that. Get server session is wicked fast. It returns a response, not that fast, but very, very quickly. Um, oh yeah, so I see actually at the bottom 35 milliseconds. That's how long it took for us to return a result here versus seven seconds in the other one. Um, so here we are grabbing an API key from the get URL. That is not a good way to do it from a security perspective, by the way. We'll kind of explain that here in a sec. But what we're talking about here is we are immediately checking to see if the user is authenticated using this function right here. We're just checking it against a hard-coded value. Again, not good from a security perspective, but you know this is kind of as an example. We're checking it and immediately hitting this if block. Okay, So we're not doing any computation aside from yoinking out that API key, checking it against a um, hard-coded value, and if that fails right here, if we don't have an API key, or if that API key is not authenticated, then we're just going to immediately hop out of that if statement, and we're going to return a bad result, okay? 
if we do include an API key, and I'll show you how we can do that. So let's first do API key equals foobar. Okay, we immediately get a response, 97 milliseconds. It took almost no time, okay? So that's with a bad API key. Now with a good API key, that's going to be when we do want to run that high compute or very slow database request. So we get like, like, and subscribe. And that's when we're going to take a little while that's going, you know, the, the you know, the request is going to hang for a little bit and that's when it's going to take a little bit longer. But that's fine because we've got a legitimate request that's come through. So as we can see, it took 7.07 .07 seconds to finish that one. So now we know that we hit, you know, our longer database requests and data requests. So this seems overly simple, right? But I do see a lot of people who just, A, just toss API endpoints up on the internet and don't even think about wrapping them in off. That's not good, especially if you're returning data that could you know, have security implications. Obviously not great there. Or they do something like this, okay? This is something that happened as well. So let's take our data requests and our DB requests, and we're gonna put them out here, right? So we're still checking for authentication, right? We're still going to return a bad response if we're not authenticated, but look what happens, okay? Simply by putting the code in the wrong place, we're still going to hang, okay? Because we are still running that really slow database request and that really slow data request. Regardless of whether or not the person's auth authenticated, we're still getting the now nah, you're not authenticated result there, but we're running all of the expensive stuff before we even check for the API key. That API key check needs to happen at the very beginning so that we avoid running up our compute time, hanging our server up, all of that, you know, all of that stuff. And you're also making database requests, which, you know, I don't know if that database request would change anything, or if you're just running a read that's pointless, but you might rack up a bill that way too. With all of this talk of, Vercel bills and AWS bills skyrocketing. There's very little talk about how people can actually make sure that the backends that they're designing are designed well. Because if you toss a badly designed backend up just about anywhere that's going to bill you for usage, you're going to rack up a high bill, right? So Vercel, you know, whenever they responded to the person who, you know, had their Vercel bill skyrocket to like 96,000 and then, you know, in a day or two, they responded and said, we'll work with you to fix design and implementation problems that led to this. To me, that indicates like they probably had a back end that was not designed super well, and that led to this skyrocketing build. That's going to happen every time. And it's okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not like, you know, crapping on anybody, but you do need to pay attention to the way that your database is designed, or you are going to rack up a bill, or you are going to have security issues. There are lots of different implications here. So this kind of unauthenticated API endpoint problem is a genuine and legitimate problem. It's something that you should be thinking about when you're designing your back end, because if you don't, you're going to rack up a bill, you're gonna have security issues, you're going to have all kinds of headaches, you know, throughout the course of, you know, your web development journey. That's about it. Fairly simple, straightforward, logical issue here that we talked about, but it is important. Take it easy, peace.